Did you know that gamers completely overreacted when it came to Star Wars Battlefront 2? In fact, there's a financial analyst out there that thinks not only are gamers not overcharged, they're actually undercharged. And that publishers should charge more for their titles. What? What is going on guys? Randall Thor 19 the man with the million back again with another video. And yeah, a lot of Star Wars Battlefront 2 stuff. Everybody coming out with their hot takes. And this is definitely the hottest take I've seen. But uh, before we get into that, I posted a video earlier about the sales of Star Wars Battlefront 2 in the UK. The physical sales are down quite a bit. 60% to be exact from the first game. Uh, doesn't look too good for EA. And now we have an analyst by the name of Evan Wingren of KeyBank Capital Markets who says that Star Wars Battlefront 2 created a perfect storm of overreaction and that us gamers aren't overcharged, we're undercharged, and that gaming is just so cheap in comparison to all the other forms of entertainment out there, like going to see a movie at the show or renting a movie at your house or buying a book and reading. But publishers are... We're taking advantage of publishers, is basically what he's saying, and they need to charge more because this type of entertainment is just so cheap. Now, <laughs> I had to look into this a little bit further because I wanted to see why he thinks that. And he does explain it, although some of the stuff I don't particularly agree with. Now, he starts off by saying that we view the negative reaction to Star Wars Battlefront 2 as an opportunity to add to, to Electronic Arts Take 2 and Activision Blizzard position. So what he means there is he's basically saying because the stock has tanked, over the last couple days because of the microtransactions that they had to remove from the game after Disney called them up and gamers did the boycott. He says that now is the perfect time to invest because stock prices are going to go back up because this is completely overblown. People will forget about this in a couple months and EA stock price will rise back up. So if you're looking to invest, now's the time. That's basically what he's saying. He goes on to say the handling of Star Wars Battlefront 2 launched by EA has been poor. You think? It's one of the worst launches I've seen in a long time. It was handled extremely poorly by EA. Every single day, all you saw was just new negative stuff from them as they put their foot in their mouth. So much so that Disney had to make a phone call and was like, yo, get rid of this stuff. We got a movie coming out. <laughs> we got to sell that movie. So stop it with your microtransactions. It goes on, despite this, we view the suspension of microtransactions in the near term as a transitory risk. It goes, gamers aren't overcharged, they're undercharged, and we're gamers. Yeah, yeah, Evan, I'm sure you're a gamer. I'm sure you're just sitting there thinking, man, we are getting one over these publishers. These games are just so cheap. They sh we should be paying more money. Instead of paying $60 for the stuff, we should be paying $100 and thanking publishers for making their games so cheap. This saga has been a perfect storm for overreaction as it involves EA, Star Wars, Reddit, and certain purist gaming journalists outlets who dislike microtransactions. You know what? You always got to watch out for those purist gaming journalists and outlets because those are the worst, right? Am I right, guys? The purest ones who just want games to be games and enjoy games without the extra stuff added on top of it. Damn those purist gaming websites. It's almost like, you know, Scooby-Doo. And we would have gotten away with it too if it weren't for those certain purest gaming journalists and websites out there. Mm. So here's how he explains his rationale that games are actually cheaper in comparison to other stuff. He goes on to say, if you take a step back and look at the data, an hour of video game content is still one of the cheapest forms of entertainment. Quantitative analysis shows that video game publishers are actually charging gamers at a relatively inexpensive rate and should probably raise prices. Now, he is right in the sense that games prices have remained stagnant, stagnant for quite some time. It's been 60 bucks for years now, whereas other things you know, because of inflations and things like that, have risen. But because games have kind of stayed at $60, it's one of the reasons why the video game industry became the multi-billion dollar monolithic empire that it has become. It's on the same level as the music, if not bigger than music, and movies and stuff like that. I mean, hell, 
We just saw Call of Duty World War II make $500 million in a weekend, which was more than Thor and uh, Wonder Woman's opening weekends combined. The video game industry is huge, and part of the reason is because I think prices have remained stagnant over the time. If they increase with inflation, you could argue if games were $80 right now or $90, maybe the video game industry isn't as big as it is. Now, he goes on to say, and this is where it gets a little fuzzy for me, he goes that uh, a simple measure of cost per hour relative to other forms of entertainment, he reckons that at $60 for the game, base game, plus $20 per month in loot boxes, not only are you buying the game at $60, you're also spending $20 in loot boxes a month. Battlefront 2 works out to about $0.40 cents per hour. If you play 2.5 hours a day for a year, 2.5 hours a day for a year. And this compares to an estimated 60 cents to 65 cents per hour for pay television, 80 cents per hour for a movie rental, and more than $3 per hour for a movie watched in a theater. That's how he has come to this real realization or analysis that Video game content is cheaper form than all this stuff. Of course, his argument is that you have to play 2.5 hours a day for an entire year. And I'm not sure people do that necessarily. A lot of people, you know, jump from game to game. And even still, how many people actually think like this? Hey, I'm not going to go rent this movie because it's only 80 cents per hour for my entertainment value, I'm going to go buy this video game for 60 bucks and play it three hours a day so I can get my my money, you know, <laughs> I, I, can, I can get my money's, my value for my money and that stuff. Who really thinks like that? Like, for me personally, it's like, does it interest me? Does it interest me enough where I want to buy it? And is the price right? Can I afford it? If so, I'm going to go buy the game. If so... I'm going to go watch the movie. If not, I'm not going, right? Um, and of course, this doesn't really take into account the consideration of the complete fallacy that you're trying to qualify entertainment as some monolithic huge thing that is similar and can be compared across the board as the same thing. It doesn't make any sense. Not everybody likes video games. Not everybody likes movies and all that stuff. And the idea that, well, maybe you should buy this video game instead of watching your favorite movie from your favorite actor is utterly ridiculous, right? Like if I said to my brother who likes to play soccer or maybe who likes to play Rock Band 3, hey, you need to stop watching Rock Band 3 and actually play League of Legends or something along those lines because that's where the better value is and former entertainment is kind of absurd when you get right down to it. Um, and then, of course, then he makes this quote, which is ridiculous. He goes on to say, Despite its inconvenience at the popular press narrative, or to the popular press narrative, if you like Star Wars and play video games at an average rate, you're far better off skipping the movie and playing the game to get the most bang for your buck. Like... I don't get that. If you like Star Wars, you're going to go see the Star Wars movie because you like Star Wars. Why would you like Star Wars? And I also like video games, so I'm not going to go see the movie, but I'm going to play the game? That doesn't make any sense. And of course, all this works out too because if you play 2.5 hours a day. So what if you don't play 2.5 hours a day, Evan? Doesn't your entire uh, argument completely just fall flat on its face at that point? Or maybe not. Maybe not. I mean, he also says $20, $20 per month in loot boxes. So you're essentially, what, for a whole year? It's $240 in loot boxes plus $60 for the game. So that's 300 bucks, and you're paying two hours a day? When you can go to a movie for $12? I don't know, man. This guy, this guy right here, it just makes me think how many people in the video game industry have basically come to the same conclusion that not only are we overacting about microtransactions, but that we own our, we aren't overcharged. We're completely undercharged in this scenario. 
that they should charge us more money to play our games. It's, I, I don't even want to think about that. But apparently, this is what they do. Quantitative analysis, where if you play this game for three hours for a full year, it's better and worth more money than something else. It's ridiculous in my opinion. Anyways, guys, I just wanted to share this with you because I thought it was really interesting. Let me know what you think. Do you feel overcharged? Do you feel undercharged? Do you think that get publishers should just charge us $100 now? Is that is that the right way? Do you think this is all just a big, huge overreaction by everybody, like Evan says? Or are you like, nah, $60, keep it where it's at. That's what I'm cool with. Uh, anyways, let me know what you think in the comments below. Make sure to hit that like button if you enjoyed the video. Uh, share this out on social media, Twitter, Facebook, Reddit. Hit the subscribe button if you're new to the channel or haven't already. Make sure you hit the notification bell right next to it so you're always notified when I drop new content. Thank you guys so much for watching the video, and I'll see everyone in the next video. Later, guys.